All right, now let's program an AI to play against um, so we actually can play a game. So let's right click on the paddle and hit duplicate. Now we have a second paddle on the screen and the reason I want to duplicate it instead of just adding a new sprite, this way the rotation is, is exactly the same and the center point that we create is exactly the same, which will make our lives slightly easier in a minute. Now let's rename it just for fun. And to do that, we're just going to right click info and we'll call it opponent. And then just hit the back arrow. Now, uh, right now we have, when you duplicated it, it automatically gave it the same code that we had in our paddle, but it's, it, we need to change some of it slightly. So right now, if you hit the green flag, it's going to look like the opponent disappears, but that's because the go to, um, X, Y coordinates at the beginning is the same as the, the ones for the paddle. So it's going to go to the exact same spot and they will overlap and it looks like it disappeared. So since the origin for scratch is right in the center, we can just change this X equals 220 to X equals negative 220 for the opponent. And now if we hit the green flag, it goes to the other side. So now it will move right now. It's moving with the keyboard. The ball doesn't recognize it. We'll fix that in a second. But we also don't want this paddle to move with the keyboard. We want it to move when the ball moves. So if we take out these if keys pressed things and just drag them off to the left, they'll disappear. Because we don't want it controlled by that. We want this paddle to go up if it's below the ball. And we want it to go down if it's above the ball. Now leave in the Y position uh, less than 150 and Y position greater than 150 because those are controlling whether or not it goes off the screen. And we want it to have the same restrictions that uh, our player one paddle has. But now we need to sense the, the height, the Y coordinate of the paddle and the Y coordinate of the ball. So if we go into motion, while we're an opponent, scroll down to Y position, grab two of those because we're going to need two. And also we want to go into sensing and grab this block down here where it says X position of opponent and grab two of those. And that's going to change slightly in a second. Now let's also go into operators we'll grab a less than and a greater than so let's just put these blocks together so let's go y position in the left hand side of both of those and put the blue blocks in the right side of both of those and we want to check y positions not x positions because we're checking the height up and down and we want to check the height of the ball for both of these. So now we have if Y position is less than the position of the Y position of the ball, which means if the ball is, if the paddle is lower than the ball, we want it to go up. So we'll stick it in the top block because that's the one that moves up. Just drag it, drop it in there. And in this one is if the Y position of the paddle is greater than the Y position of the ball, meaning that the paddle is higher than the ball, we want it to move down. So we'll throw it in the second condition. Now, if it, let's try this and see how it runs. So it's really jumpy. It's moving 10 at a time. Kind of looks dumb and it looks like it's probably pretty hard to beat. So let's stop it. Let's try making this five and negative five. These numbers are basically just controlling the speed of your opponent. That's going much smoother and it looks like I might possibly be able to beat it. Now the last thing we want it 
do right now is make the ball bounce off of the opponent paddle as just like it does off of our paddle. So we'll go into ball and we're going to go. So here we have our if block that makes it bounce off the paddle. It says if touching paddle, do this, which means bounce. So we can grab, while we're in operators, we can grab an or block, drag it out, and we'll drag this touching paddle into the first part of it. And we'll stick it back in there. And now we'll go to sensing and grab another touching one. Let's say if touching opponent. So now this is just asking the program, if is the ball touching the paddle or the opponent, if so, then uh, multiply direction by negative one, which in this instance means bounce. So if you hit play, it will now bounce off of the opponent's paddle instead of going right through it, which is what we wanted to do, even though it's lagging right now. So that's it for this one. I'll see you in the next video.